Hi, welcome to Tracy's Homestead. Join me here on the floor because we're going to be learning how we did laundry and then later dishes when I lived off grid in Alaska. This is going to be describing how we did these jobs in our own home. Everybody in uh, McCarthy had their own setup. Some people had generators, some people had battery banks, some people had refrigerators, some people had uh, septic systems, etc. We really did not have any of that. We were very low-key, off-grid, uh, bare basics. So other people's experiences might be different. I'm just letting you know how we did it. So the first thing that we had was we had a wood stove. And the wood stove was the key to almost, almost everything. Um, because that's where you could heat up water, cook, dry your clothes, keep yourself warm, uh, getting water ready for baths, um, etc. So another important part of doing anything hygiene related or anything cleaning related is getting water. Um, we got our water from a creek a few miles away. Um, we never like boiled it or purified it. We just used it straight from the creek. Um, the last inch or so of water in whatever container we had was reserved for not drinking because that's where the sediment would settle. So we would usually take either the snow machine and sled and get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, maybe 35 gallons at a time. Um, in the summer, we couldn't get quite as much because we didn't have a trailer for our four-wheeler. So we would just strap things onto the four-wheeler. And so we'd get maybe 20 gallons at a time, but it was easier to go get water that way. So we would go to the creek and uh, in the winter, we'd bring a hatchet so we could chop the ice open and we would bring a plastic pitcher of some sort um, and scoop it out of the hole and pour it into five gallon buckets or um, five gallon water dispensers, the kind that has like the little twist it and it dispenses. So that's how we would transport water from the creek to our home. And then we would bring all the water in so that it was ready for us and at room temp so we didn't have to defrost it before we used it if it was winter time. Um, and we would use our blue water dispenser for the drinking water. Um, and it would just leave that last little bit inaccessible and then we'd unscrew it and use it elsewhere. Um, and then we would just refresh it from five gallon buckets um, and let it settle a little bit before we got a drink. So yeah. So let me show you how we heated water because we didn't have a water heater. We didn't have a pump. We didn't have running water. We didn't have any of that stuff. So this is how we did it. Now you're going to have to imagine my electric range is a wood stove because I don't have a wood stove because I live in civilization now. Eventually, we'll probably get a wood stove if we get a bigger spot. So here is my not actually a wood stove setup, but we would always have this pot of simmering water on the wood stove. It's kind of steaming. I have it on low here on my regular stove. And this was the water that you didn't drink this. This is not recommended for making tea out of because... It has sediment and stuff. This is where we would put the last little dregs of each five gallon bucket. And this is the water that you would use to do any washing that you needed. If you wanted to wash yourself, you needed to have enough hot water. If you wanted to wash dishes, you needed to have enough hot water. And if you wanted to wash clothes, you had to have some hot water too, unless you felt like rubbing your hands in ice cold water for half an hour. So the more, the hotter the water, the easier it was to do the jobs because you could use room temp water plus a little bit of the hot water and um, make it manageable. Otherwise, you're just using up your hot water and it takes a long time for it to heat back up. So without further ado, I'm going to teach you how we did laundry out in the bush. All right, so out in McCarthy, we had five gallon buckets galore. Um, you could use them for everything. Here in Iowa, I don't have a whole lot of five gallon buckets because I just don't use them. I have a washing machine instead of a five gallon bucket. 
I have tap water instead of five gallon buckets. So I'm using what I have around here to show you. So this uh, old refrigerator bin that I don't use in my fridge, I actually do use to hand wash clothes still. This is the hot water dipped out of the uh, pot right here. Um, in McCarthy, we used powdered detergent because it was easier to transport. Here, I have pods because it helps my kids to uh, be independent with their laundry. And then this is room temp water that we'll use for mixing it up. So here's what we would do. We put our laundry detergent into our five gallon bucket and pour the hot water over it and get it mixed up. And then you're going to pour your room temp water in. So that it's the right temperature. And if it's not deep enough, or if it's not warm enough, you just got to keep adjusting it. So I'm going to pour a little bit more room temp water because I have a little bit more water. And then I'm going to go get some more hot water. Now this is kind of warm, like if you let your coffee sit for about 45 minutes and then try to drink it, that's about the temperature. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the actual dirty clothes that I have. These are actually my dirty clothes. And we're going to pick the cleanest ones first to wash. I happen to know that this skirt is probably the cleanest. I used it one day. In McCarthy, you never wash clothes after one day unless you fell in like mud or something. And even then you would let it dry and scrape as much and shake as much out as possible because this water is gonna wash as many clothes as it possibly can. I happen to know that these are the dirtiest because I have been wearing them probably two weeks, which is pretty standard for McCarthy because if you're going to be washing clothes, you don't want to have to wash them that often. So you just keep wearing them. I know I have another sock in here somewhere. I guess I'll find it at some point. All right. We did not have a um, plunger. We did not have anything to scrub them against. We only had our hands. And so we would just sit there and scrub. Usually we tell stories or talk with people about what we were going to do with the rest of our day. And this is how we would do it. Get something. Rub it, rub it, rub it. When it seems not too stinky and not too brown, set it aside. Squeeze it out and then set it aside. Can I tell you, feminine laundry, worse to do. You usually do that in a separate little container so that you wouldn't have to deal with blood everywhere else. I'll probably speed this part of the video up because I'm just gonna repeat it with all my clothes. Now this bears noting um, any place that's prone to more stinkiness, like underarms and crotches, gets a little extra care. A lot of extra rubbing and soaking. Is that water dirty? Yeah. Do you want to 
polish it? I don't want to help. No, you can try. You just gotta wash your hands when we're done. Go ahead. Just push it up. All right, you want to see how dirty the water is? That's just from about six clothing items. So, let's show you what we did with the gray water. Now we'll get the uh, rinse water ready. It'll be about the same as the wash water, but no soap in it. I'm going to pour the hot water first. So don't touch, it's hot. Let's start with the sock. Put it in there, and this one. And then we just do it kind of in the same order. If you knew that something was dirty, then others, like uh, jeans, that was usually the last to rinse, too. Is it too hot or is it okay? It's okay. All right. So after washing and rinsing, we had to dry them. Um, the best way to dry them was indoors next to the wood stove in the winter, um, but we didn't always have room for that, so we'd hang them to dry outside. Um, during the summer, we'd hang them to dry outside. But you just put them back into the bucket, unless somebody is using your rinse water to wash their clothes. Because if more than one person had to wash clothes, oftentimes, um, like my brother would use the rinse water and just add a little soap and then his rinse water would be my mom's wash water. So water got used a couple times. You want to put it in there? Good job. Alright. So we're going to take it and we're going to hang it up to dry. But I'm going to do that because it's going to be cold outside. You can watch me from the door, okay? So we're going to let it all dry, and I'm going to ask Margaret. Margaret, did you like to wash the clothes with me? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, was that fun, or was it hard work? Fun. Yeah? I thought it was hard work. Did you get all wet? Yeah. Did Mommy get all wet? Yeah. Yeah, is that why you're in a blanket? Yeah. So, we would get really wet out there. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. It was hard work. I like having a washing machine. Do you like to have a washing machine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I like to have a washing machine. So. You have books. I have books? Books. Both. Yes, I do have both. I have a washing machine and a weighed hand wash, which is good. Like that. And here, I have a dedicated plunger that I can use. Huh? If, yeah. Why? It's in the bathroom. And so yeah. if I, in my bathroom, I'll show you later. So that I have a plunger that I can use um, to hand wash clothes if I need to. 
it does help with some of the work. You still gotta squeeze them out, rinse them, and squeeze them out, and everything else too, though. Not to mention hanging to dry. So hopefully the clothes get freeze dried out there. Yeah, and then we'll bring them in to finish drying, and we'll put them away. Is the floor all wet? <sighs> okay. And there you go. Let's talk about melting snow. Let's say that you can get enough snow to fill up your pot. Let's see how much water you get from it. All right, we're going to start melting the snow and uh, we'll see how much water it makes. And I'll bring it back when I've got it melted. All right, so let me bring you back here. It's all melted. It's not hot yet. I'll turn off my burner so I don't burn myself. My pan's about five inches tall, but more like four and a half. And let's see how much water it makes. About an inch and uh, an eighth. So let's uh, show you what kind of water it is. All right, we've got a kind of a off-white bowl, and uh, here's our melted snow. And let's see if this is water you want to drink. Mmm. Appetizing. So long story short, if you're going to melt snow, plan on not drinking it, or you could filter it and boil it and then drink it, but honestly it's just not the best for using around the homestead um, off, off grid, but if you got to do what you got to do, then you got to do what you got to do. That's the answer about snow that I know I'm gonna get. Let's talk about how we washed dishes in McCarthy. Uh, number one, we did have a sink. The sink had no tap water, so we just permanently moved the faucet over to the side. Um, and it did have drains, but the drains looped together into a Y and ended about right there. So what we would do to drain is we would get a five gallon bucket and we would position it so that it went under the drain. Now my plumbing here isn't made so that I could actually get it under there. I'd have to use a different size bucket for this, but we stick it under there so that when we drained it, it would flow into this bucket. And then when it got about here, then you take it out carefully and take it outside and dump it. Okay, pretty simple. Um, if it overflowed, that was a huge mess and super gross. So you gotta make sure that you always dump it. All right, let me show you how we handled the actual sink portion. My own sink is a two basin sink, but as you can see, one is much smaller than the other. And McCarthy ours was even, so split right in half. Um, but that still meant that we would have had to have used quite a bit of water to wash of our, our dishes. So instead of filling it up, we would use a bowl and we would fill up the bowl and use that because that requires a lot less water and it's still just as easy to dump it out and drain it. And here is that hot water tank that we, we called it the hot water tank our hot bucket on the wood stove and that's where we would get our hot water just like for washing laundry so this is our setup we've got dirty dishes we've got a bowl uh, this one's dirty still because we used it to make some salad but it's just rinsed out we would use whatever we could use um, we'd use whatever kind of basin we had. Um, we did have a sink, like I said, but we would oftentimes just put a bigger bowl in it so we could conserve on water. 
clean bowl here. Uh, it's been rinsed out and everything. We'll use this as our rinse basin and then a small drying rack. We didn't have a whole lot of room, so small was definitely the way to go. So let's first dip out some hot water from the uh, hot water tank that we, we called it the hot water tank. It's actually just a pot of water on the wood stove. And then we'll add our room temp water to get the right temperature for washing dishes. Some hot water. And some room temp water. Plenty. Same for the rinse. Some hot water. Some room temp water. Then you're gonna get your sponge. Sponge your scrubby. Get it wet. Get your soap. And the first thing that you're going to wash is some sort of a cup because it's going to be helpful for washing the rest of your dishes. And you don't put this soapy cup straight into the rinse. Rinse it here first so that you get less soap into there. And then this is going to be what you use to pour water over the bigger items. If you need to soak anything, like this has got some cream cheese that's sat, set it down in the bottom while you're working on the rest of it. If your dishes are super duper dirty, you're going to want to wipe them out with a paper towel first or something uh, because you don't want this dish water to get mucky uh, too fast. Always wash your cleanest dishes first, just like when you were washing clothes. Always wash your cleanest clothes first and work your way to the dirtiest because there's no point in spreading the dirt to everything. Then if you get anything like this, if it's just too, like a little floaty thing, just pour it back into the wash water. Now we would never um, throw out hot water if it was still hot enough to do more dishes. Um, so as long as this was still warm enough to do any dishes, we did dishes as long as we could. And if it needed a little bit more hot water, we'd just add a little bit more hot water until the dishes were done. Um, if we got to the end and the water was still warm, um, you can use this rinse water to wash other things around the house. Um, you could even wash your hands or face or whatever, um, depending on how mucky it's gotten. Uh, you can use this for cleaning anything around the house. Um, you don't want to use water once. You you got to use water a couple times. Now, if you if this wash water got dirty enough that you weren't getting your pots clean, then you would dump this in the gray water, and then this would become your wash water. You'd add more hot water and some soap. You'd clean this out and it would become your rinse bucket and you just swap them around. So we just, we never used water once. Um, I mean, unless you're drinking it, I suppose. So the last thing I'm going to clean is this bowl very carefully. And then I'm not going to show it to you because I already showed you with the uh, laundry water, but you would just dump it like any other gray water. Um, you could either toss it outside the way that it is, or um, because we used our sink as the collection basin, basin, you could just pour it down the drain and it would land in that five gallon bucket. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then I'll come over and rinse it and I'll show you the rest.
when that cup comes in handy. And then you dump this water. Clean dishes. Here are a few rules of dishes that we had out in McCarthy. Um, your cup is your cup. And this is your coffee cup, your tea cup, your instant breakfast, mix it with shelf stable milk cup, your water cup, whatever cup. And if you use a spoon to stir it in, you have a spoon and this is your spoon. And you use this spoon and then you lick it off and then you set it in your spot on the table, same as your cup and you set it in your spot on the table and that's your cup. And this is your cup for like all the time. So everyone, we had like a couple extras in case we had somebody to visit, but um, even now, um, I got this cup this morning, but I'll probably use it for like four days and just do a quick rinse in between drinks because I'm so used to it. Like that was what you had to do. So that's what I do. Same with a spoon. I'll usually just put the spoon in my cup so that nobody else grabs it. And, puts it in the sink for me to wash later. Um, if you had a plate that was still pretty clean, you just saved it. Um, if you made something messy, um, you splashed water in it and you rinsed it out as quickly as you could right away while it was still fresh so that it wouldn't kind of solidify and use more water. Uh, water was important. You couldn't just turn on the tap. Um, Melting snow, not so easy. It was like three or four miles to the creek and you had to get all bundled up in winter and kneel down and scoop it all out into the buckets, bring it home, carry it in. And that's how you got, had to get water. So you just didn't waste it. So um, other unwritten rules or, you know, just expectations that we had about it is uh, you didn't let the dishes pile up. We just didn't have that many dishes. We had enough for us plus like one or two for guests. Um, if we had somebody come over, then we had enough plates and bowls and stuff for them. Um, but we didn't have any more than that. Um, most things were one pot cooking. Um, we really just didn't have the burner space for anything else, but one pot cooking. Um, and you, Never let the gray water get more than like two thirds full because carrying a bucket of clean water, a five gallon bucket of clean water with a lid on it is hard, but carrying an open topped five gallon bucket with slimy, gray, soapy, stinky food water carrying it, stepping down the stairs, and bringing it over to a place where you can dump it. I cannot tell you how many times my front and my knees got soaked with gray water because I neglected to take the gray water out um, before I drained the water. So it's definitely important to do that. So yeah. Anyway, that's how we washed dishes. And you've seen how we did laundry. Um, the takeaway is that water was incredibly precious and we used it carefully and resourcefully and we never wasted it and we were very careful with it. And it has definitely followed me into my modern life, my today life, um, because I wear clothes as long as I can when they start to smell bad or get stained Yes, I will take them off. I do have a washing machine. I am fine with washing my stuff, but I just, I'm so used to it. Uh, dishes, 
same thing. I'll use that cup for like four straight days because it's not getting disgusting and rinsing it in between and it's just me. Um, I hesitate to use serving dishes. Just use the pan. The pan's already dirty. Why get another dish dirty? I have to wash that one when the pan's already dirty. So, um, I miss having constant hot water on the, the stove that was like bringing the moisture into the air. I do miss that um, as part of a modern day because it was just like, it felt nice to have that moisture in the air. Um, but I do have constant hot water on the tap. So there's that. Um, yeah. I have so many things I could tell you about Alaska. And everyone's experience is going to be different. I'm sure Alaskans will eventually come over and watch this and be like, well, we didn't do it that way. And I'm like, well, of course not. You had a different setup. We had friends with battery banks and generators and solar panels, and they had chickens, and they raised a garden, and they had a, um, like a, a cold shelter for their veggies and stuff like that. And then I knew people with septic systems and battery systems that made it so that they could turn on a light day or night whenever they wanted to. Um, I knew people with like in-floor heating. It depends on how much money you have and where you want to spend it and all of that. So, but we were very rustic. We were very much um, bare bones basics out there and it led to a whole lot of interesting stories. So I hope you've enjoyed this and let me know if there's any kind of thing that you would like to hear about, about Alaska, because I would love to tell you. All right, thank you very much. God bless you all, and we'll talk to you soon. Come see me on Instagram if you'd like, Tracy's Homestead. Um, subscribe, please. I'd love to get a few more subscribers, just so I can see if YouTube throws you a party for 100 subscribers. Probably not, but you never know. God bless, and take care. Bye-bye.